the University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower Chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show in which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. He needs no introduction, but he's going to get some introduction. It's our executive producer, Professor Jason Roach. And very happy to be here. It's been a long time, and uh, I finally have Zoom working. The real reason is I'm using my wife's laptop. <laughs> I did notice that when you first came into the uh, room, that it was listed as uh, Maggie. That's right. Well. I apparently can't update the latest Zoom on my university issued laptop. I don't have administrative rights, so I've been without Zoom, which is not a bad thing during this uh, during this epidemic. I've got to not, say, not a bad thing, not a bad thing at all. I think I remember from one of the last times we had you on, Jason. You're uh, coming to us live from your uh, basement, very similar to myself. Uh, you see over both of our shoulders that support I beam that holds our entire house up. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you. A beautiful, uh, you know, uh, Metro Detroit. What can I say here? Continuing around the horn, uh, Professor Kendra Evans is here from chemistry. Hi. Hi. It's good to be here. I guess it's been a little while for me, too. Yeah, that's all right. We're only going every other week, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. We're socially <laughs> distancing the shows themselves. It's only reasonable. If we do anything otherwise, we won't know what to do. It, it really makes me think of those early days when people were social distancing in lines of cars as well. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> you know, all, all possibilities here, all possibilities, you know. Uh, Professor Dan Maggio is here, of course, from the first organization. Matt. What's shaking? And hi, Matt's mom. Um, not much. <laughs> just the, I, I had the week off. Our organization was shut down this week. So I did absolutely nothing. Um, which has been my story of my life since March. So, well, that's not true. I've been productive, but uh, not in the uh, uh, social vacationing scene. So, thanks for uh, towing the line in terms of. Uh, yep, I'm doing a quick scan here. You're our only headset uh, panelist today, Dan. So, uh, oh, win the thanks. prize. Thank you. Do it. Oh, can I come pick it up? <laughs> uh, it better okay. not be a Vincetta Garage gift certificate. <laughs> Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Someone who knows about uh, Vincetta Garage uh, gift certificates all too well, Professor Dave Chow is also here. Pleasure to be here, as always. <laughs> Did somebody I'm... squeal about me stealing, a, I mean, liberating a few extra ones? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I gotta say, though, um, this is one of those, um, you know, uh, silver lining sort of things, right, Dave? We have not seen the traffic that we saw for those eight years leading up to these last few months. I actually have parking in front of my house for the first time in like a billion years, it seems like. So, <laughs> oh, yes, the wonders <sighs> of living next to a popular restaurant. Oh, I'm not complaining much. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Mara Livesey is here, also from chemistry and biochemistry. Um, somehow, I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. Is that true? I don't know. That is true, because I had to miss the last time we were taping. I was doing landscaping. Okay, that's important, too. We saw your before and after pictures on Facebook, and it's pretty remarkable. Thank you. What was it? Uh, not rhododendrons. What did you move that was a big deal? Peonies, no. right? You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember the plants you transplanted? It was I don't know right? anything about plants. They were green. <laughs> they were green and white. <laughs> I think that Kendra's right, though. They were hostas. I think they were hostas. Oh, hostas. Okay. That's right. The hostas were transplanted from the back. Yep. There you go. As my husband would say, let's not get hostile about the hostas. <laughs> Love it. It's a great dad joke. <laughs> and what a perfect transition into uh, Ask the Professor's own greenest of thumbs, Professor Heather Hill from English. And botany. And botany. Yeah. <laughs> she has to survive a zombie apocalypse so somebody can grow food for us. 
<laughs> She's our botanical literaturist. Yeah. I am particularly happy about our fruit garden. It's doing quite well. Potatoes are ripe. Yay. Yes. As long as uh, things aren't being blown down by these winds, it's nice to have a little bit of rain in the mix now. Yeah. And there is a groundhog here. Oh, <gasps> a whistle pig. There is. Hooray! It was, it was out by the grill in the driveway the other night. Ooh. It migrated from my house. Or Grover and Gracie and their children are still in my back. You should see the hole they've made in my back. Well, you can see uh. Grover and Gracie you know, and keep them. About head under dog. the fence i mean it's not really a fenced yard anymore given what the various rodents have done to it mm -hmm. and um i don't know if this is legal or not you can um use mothballs that might be good. Oh. they're legal naphthalene you can buy it at the hardware store mm -hmm. it's really hurting me so what would john belushi do <laughs> eat them oh god <laughs> Anyway. Continuing on, uh, Professor Jim Tubbs is here from Religious Studies. Hello. Speaking of whistle pigs, I've got a good friend that's got a whistle pig problem. And this particular whistle pig dug quite a myriad uh, tunnel uh, underneath the side of her house, and her air conditioning compressor and the slab it's on is now sinking down into the ground at a weird angle because it was undermined by the whistle pig. <laughs> Under Evil creatures. Well, yeah, they, they are. They are. I've never heard them called whistle pigs. Is that a southern thing or what? Oh no, that that was one of our questions on Ask the Professor. What about two years ago? Give or take, yeah. And, and we've been oh. referring we've been referring to groundhogs as whistle pigs ever since. Mm. <laughs> yes, I think Heather introduced us to that. Yes, and I have a lovely Dave Chow original of a whistle pig. Oh, that's you right. Do? <laughs> right. And there was also, quite uh, a history with rodents. I think, <laughs> I think your picture of the whistle pig was whistling too, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> that sounds about right. He's I big. Don't guy. recall. Oh, well, then maybe it's a forgery. Okay. <laughs> if it, if it's good, I'll I'll say it's mine. <laughs> Professor uh, Stephen Manning is here from political science, although technically from the Department of Retired. Thank you for for mentioning that. <laughs> Being accurate about that. It looks like you've uh, you've balanced out the uh, the front lighting. I think you're going to be okay, Stephen. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> I've been turning lights on, and just actually a few minutes ago, a fire engine truck was right out front, and maybe it's with the electricity problems the neighborhood's having, and decided to turn on the uh, the, the 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 bells and whistles and stuff. Right in front of the house. Like, <laughs> what's going on? It's the apocalypse. Maybe, maybe it was somebody's birthday. And they were yeah, joining the, a birthday party. The drive by birthday party. So maybe this thing is causing a, a fire in the neighborhood. I don't know. If the fireworks didn't do it for the last, uh, since what, Memorial Day mm -hmm. up until uh, July 4th evening, maybe this, this, will, uh, this will do it. I don't know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Professor uh, Beth Oljar is here from Philosophy with her uh, new kitty. I think it was Mia. Mia, yeah, yes. Excellent. Good to be here. I, I love getting the, uh, the Facebook-based uh, updates about the social structure of the felines in your home. <laughs> <laughs> they don't automatically just get along. I mean, she was in kitty prison for, you know, a day or so. Kitty prison. Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> And then she just looked at me with that face, and I felt terrible leaving her end up. I just couldn't do it, so we decided to take a chance. So, All right. Well, so far, so good, right? We have hissing, but no real fights. So okay. I think it's just a question of getting acclimated. Sally behaving herself? I think she feels slightly rejected. Oh. oh. Mm. No. <laughs> I wasn't joking. It's a complicated social structure. It's like better than Dynasty, frankly, and it's only three cats. With gender, it's like an anthropology experiment. <laughs> Let me know when they start fighting in the fountain. That's all. Oh, jeez. 
I'll tell you an anthropology experiment. Go on a go to Costco on a Saturday afternoon when they've got samples. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Not anymore. Isn't that like Darwinism? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, folks, we're uh, we're uh, graced with the presence of uh, my own mom, uh, D. Mayo, here today, who asked me for her birthday and Mother's Day. Uh, to be on the show and of course it's just a good thing to do so we're happy to have you here mom Hope you happy don't to be here welcome you. thank you thank you you're from the department of having raised me and continuing to raise me how's that <laughs> that is right and i consider it a job well done yeah i i, I have to agree with that <laughs> we would agree with that too well, thank you he's all right he'll do <laughs> yeah no receipts no guarantees no warranties <laughs> And definitely no instructions. Right. And he was our uh, our first, so any mistakes we made, <laughs> probably all on him. He yeah, was the trial type. run. <laughs> right. right. Speaking of free samples. Right. <laughs> well, folks, um, this is a program where you send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send the questions to us in a number of ways. You can email us at atp at udmercy.edu. You can reach us on the web at udmercy.edu slash atp. Find us on Facebook, of course. We just added five more people to our Facebook group. Or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. So here's our uh, big reveal for the day. Um, we have a set of questions that were sent in by my uh, middle son, uh, Lorenzo, also known as Enzo Mayo. These are questions about a subject that the Mayo boys hold quite dear, and it's probably my fault, so I'll take the blame for it. But oh. these are questions about uh, retro video games. Uh -oh. oh boy! So uh, I think that most of us should be able to answer at least a handful of these. We're not going to be uh, up a creek too much. Um, the arcade classic Donkey Kong. Most people know that Donkey Kong was one of the original uh, big time video games. It saw a direct sequel on what very popular Nintendo handheld system? Game Boy. Is Game Boy? Yes, that's right. Absolutely. Hold on. I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I promise there'll be a few other ones here um, um, that are going to be uh, uh, possible. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Possible. Possible. What was the name of the Japanese equivalent to the American Nintendo Entertainment System? I'll even give you a pretty big hint. Atari? Uh, its other nickname, I'm sorry, Beth? Atari? No, it wasn't Atari. Atari was a separate uh, company than Nintendo. But we called it the NES or the Nintendo Entertainment System. They called it a nickname for family computer. Don't think too hard. Family computer? What, like the crowd around or something like that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Famcom. That is exactly what it was called. It was called. Are the you Famcom. serious? That's right. <laughs> oh, no. oh, man. I'm gonna go play the lottery. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're buying tickets. Oh my gosh! Very very funny. Very very funny. Okay, let's see. Ah, this shouldn't be too tough. Many games, read between the lines here, on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System had this word inserted in front of their titles. Super? Super. Super. Mario? Is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, this was originally submitted to me as multiple choice, and uh, some of the, uh, the distractors, as we call them in the academy, uh, were also entertaining, but we're not going to talk about that right now. I'm like, maximum, really? That, that's just too many characters. How about uh, this one? Everybody knows about superstar video game character Mario. Uh, he's been each of these professions, except for one in a video game. Carpenter, plumber, waiter, physician. Waiter. Physician. 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 No, you know, the first one I heard was waiter, and that's the correct answer. He's oh, been all the other ones in games. Yeah, he's not been a waiter. He has not been a waiter. Okay. There was even actually a, a puzzle game that was essentially a um, branch off of Tetris that was called Dr. Mario, and he was fighting viruses. 
So uh, we've got that going for us. <laughs> Save us, Mario, from the pandemic. Um, <laughs> let's see. In the European version of video games, what is the video format or what's the acronym for the video format? Hell. It's PAL, that's right, absolutely. So um, people who, uh, at least back in the day when VCRs were still big, would go to Europe, would find that they weren't able to play the videotapes that we used in, uh, in America in the same way. Uh, primarily in Britain is where PAL is uh, really, really big. Still so. have that problem with DVDs. That's right, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. DVD format's a big deal. Those of us who watch a lot of British DVDs, that can be kind of problematic. Yep. Although. Well, there's uh, quite a number of uh, hack converters you can get now that uh, that take care of a lot of that. Not all of it, but a lot of it. I blame it all on Edwin DeWin, who got me. But, yeah. Edwin mentioned Prime suspect. Play them all. Yeah. That's right. That's right. What game console for Nintendo came between the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo GameCube? Nintendo 64. That's right. N64. Uh, Jason's on a on a tear right here, uh, Enzo. So he's ripping your questions. <laughs> Enzo's right over Good here. Questions, though. Don't feel oh, is he right there? <laughs> no. No. Questions get asked. I feel no. like this whole question set is really discriminatory against those of us who grew up using the PlayStation. Uh, well, we haven't gotten to that part of the question. Okay. So, like, I don't know any of these. <laughs> Wait, so okay. you said retro. My yeah. idea, my my time frame for retro was a little before where you're at oh, now God. it just shows the difference <laughs> where your son is at and where i'm at cabinets you know what i, I mean? was like in the early 80s like no oh, retro late 70s yeah i was thinking oh. i'm so old that retro might be a ps3 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or he's so young i should say well, exactly. jason just be thankful retro doesn't in, you know like like flames and fire and lightning and the wheel or something like that yeah so <laughs> Well, my uh, my mind isn't so not sharp, uh, Mom, that I can't remember both you and Dad plugging the old uh, bipedal pong system into mm -hmm. the CRT TV. Oh yeah, or the year that you gave Dad uh, an Atari twenty six hundred for Father's Day. That was a really big deal, big big deal back in the day. Yes, I knew that day. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, oh, so Dad, Dad got the system, and not you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. The, the kids know this very well at my house as, you know, dad's the one that bought the Nintendo Switch, not uh, the boys. So. This explains a lot. <laughs> How about this I one? I this honestly then. This oh, well. Video game. What series of video games across many different systems and consoles features the Belmont family fighting Dracula and other supernatural evils? Like Sims? Mm -mm. Huh? The kids know this is one of my favorite video game. Um, like a Castlevania? Castlevania is what it's called. That's right. Wow. Very well done. Very well done. This one is actually pretty well known for its historical uh, aspect here, too. I should give a little bit of a shout out to my uh, older, or oldest son, Joseph, who helped Enzo write a few of these at the end. Which video game wherein you fight Nazis? Oh, Wolfenstein. World War II, that's right. It's considered the original first-person shooter. That's Wolfenstein was the yeah. name of the game. That's right. And you that's, jumped all over that. Now, that's what I call retro. That's where my <laughs> mind is. That's probably, where, when is that? Does Enzo know? That's probably early 80s. Actually, I think we figured it out. It was late 80s or early 90s. Okay. You know? A little later than that. All right. all right, we'll go super retro here One more, uh, a couple more times. But now that I see that there are no PlayStation um, questions, Mara, I'm starting to get really embarrassed. <laughs> what is right. the highest numeric level you can reach before the original Pac-Man arcade unit actually runs out of memory and just stops? Holy cow. Now, if you do this mathematically, you can get it. That's a great trivia question. Was it like a 99999 thing? You know, you're looking at it from the point of view of decimals, but these things are written in binary. So it has so to be the power of two. 256. It's 256. That's right. When you reach level 256, there is nothing left in the computer and the game just freezes. And by the way, even though that sounds like completely bonkers. It does. 
several people have gone that far playing wow. the game live for several days oh, crap. to be able to achieve that oh, goal. Yeah. Check out YouTube. You know, I want to be there when they film the guy who just got the 255 or lady. Sorry, and then <laughs> and they had to start all over again. Guy, right? That's right. Well, there's a big controversy last week about the guy that uh, reclaimed the Donkey Kong. That's right. Title. So. That's right. Uh, one more here. One more. Uh, Nintendo's best-selling console of all time was released in 2006. Remember, when you were born in 2008, that's pretty retro. Uh, what was the name of the first motion-controlled console? We. Wii? Wii. It was the Wii. Wii. The Wii. Yes, that's Wii. right. We would like to play. Yeah, Enzo, they totally smoked your entire set. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but he what? still gets a mug. Yeah, yeah we'll you still, still get a mug. mug. Don't worry. Still <laughs> Matt, let's not push it, okay? I mean, he's going to come back with, like, long division or something. I mean. That's right. That's and right. And he still gets two mugs. There he is. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Oh, I guess that's it. He's not interested in anything else. Let's take uh, let's take some other questions here. Um, dear Matt and panelists, it's been over two years since I sent in list of movies for the panelists. I may have come up with a better challenge this time around. I've come up with a new list that I hope will be fun for your panel. Given a list of five things that sound seemingly random, the panelists must come up with their commonality. So here's an example. The first one is done for you. Amoco, Speedway, Sunoco, Shell, BP, of course, the answer would be petroleum stations. Yeah. Some on this list are very obscure and I think basically are unrecognizable, but it'll be up to the group to come up with a specific commonality. I'll defer to Professor Miles' judgment as to what he deems worthy of passing grade. Please enjoy our old friend, Julie Elder from Poughkeepsie, New York. Thanks for sending the questions, Julie. Hey. You remember that Julie is our uh, go-to person for, she would give us a set of actors and actresses oh, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick the movie mm -hmm. that they're from. So let's see what we can do. Uh, th this isn't too bad. And it's a little broader than uh, uh, retro video games to someone born in 2008. <laughs> uh, Tempest, executive, vibe, torpedo, G3. They're all car models. Kanye. Pontiac. They're Pontiacs. That's right. Oh, yes. Very first car was a Pontiac Tempest. Oh, okay. I mean, I think when you say G3 and Vibe, those are very recent models or more recent models. And, uh, until they went closed. I mean, you know. Yeah. Right, exactly. I also point out that Tempest was an old style arcade game. Too. Oh, <laughs> I love that game. <laughs> We're talking about Shakespeare. Games. Yep. Sorry, your uh, your old Firebird isn't on the list uh, uh, there, Mom. I know I've brought it up many times on the show. <laughs> Firebird was a sweet car. Right, orange. Oh, it was. It was, it was beautiful. Great Most car. Car. All right, let's try these. Sertig, Humara, Costin, Carnivore, Air Stab. Carnivore. Air Stab. Air stab. Tomorrow. James, this is like uh, what Council Dive of Cheers or something like that. No. <laughs> Software packages. Um, that's a good guess, but no, that's that's I'm afraid not even close. Either, uh... There is a bottle of wine called Carnivore. Ooh, very nice, very nice. I don't recognize the others. <laughs> yeah, the air stab wine doesn't sound so good. Doesn't sound good. No, I don't think so. It sounds like what, it's um, it's an article of clothing. Nike shoes in a particular culture, or they're Nike shoes, is what they are. These are brands. Oh, like Nike gosh, shoes. Oh, yeah. that is messed up. Yeah, carnivore shoes. Hmm. Carnivore shoes. They eat your feet. You know, it's uh, makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay, let's see how uh, well you all are traveled. Massive, Wilson, Silverheels, Bushnell, Albert. Binoculars. Binoculars. Yeah. Are those uh, are they mountains? They are mountains. Where are they? Uh, somewhere <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> Canada. Montana. 
I actually don't know what country they're in, so I'm giving you partial credit, Dan. They're they're peaks named peaks from the Rockies. Named oh peaks. for the Rockies. Oh, okay. we know where they are. <laughs> But, but didn't Dan say somewhere on planet Earth? Yeah, I did, because I did know. Well, <laughs> it's not wrong. It's not wrong, right? It's not wrong, yeah. I'm just thinking of Jeopardy with, um, oh, what's the Cheers episode with, uh, not Norm. Um, Clavin. Cliff? Yeah, Clavin Cliff. <laughs> I've not been in my kitchen. <laughs> I was thinking more of the, uh, the day that Jerry Seinfeld and his friends went to L.A. and was using a payphone and didn't know exactly where he was. Excuse me, sir, where are we? Earth keeps walking. <laughs> all, the bases. all right, Beth, I'm looking in your direction here. Harney, Josephine, Gilliam, Multnomah, Clackamas. Counties in Oregon? The waterfalls, aren't they? It's counties in Oregon. Jason just comes out of the... Holy crap. Wow. Now, how did you know showed that? up today? <laughs> hey. Yeah, I um that would have been a very, very tough one. I guess that's what you mean when you write questions that are obscure. That's incredible. All right, let's try this one. We're definitely going retro on this one. Bone dust, breezy brisbane, darla, pineapple, waldo. <laughs> Makes me think about Finding Nemo, but that's... Mm. Are those the little rascals? Those are the little rascals. That's oh, right. Oh, no. Nice. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. I am so showing my age. <laughs> I knew who Darla was. I just didn't know the other ones. Yeah. Oh, familiar. Jim, they must have all been like single episode characters. Uh, no, well, they be. changed over time, you know, they started in the 30s. So, yeah, those are the little rascals. Mom, you must have watched them growing up. I did. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> At least you weren't a member. So, I mean, that, that's that's okay. <laughs> I remember when Buckwheat got shot. Got <laughs> shot? I think that that was uh... Saturday Night Live. Oh, oh, that, was oh that Buckwheat, Live. yeah. Okay, how about this? Muldaur, Culber. Kelly, McFadden, Urban. Jesuits, and Western stars. Mm -mm. You're on the right track, Stephen. One but... more time, yeah. Country sure. singers. Mold... I'm sorry, Heather? Country singers? No, no. Um, it, it's something show busy. Moldauer, Culber, Kelly, McFadden, Urban. Cowboy? Streets in Hollywood? No. But something show businessy. Something show businessy. Uh, they even, have a show in common, or do they play a role? They do have a show in common, and I'm looking in a very decidedly Chow and Maggio direction. For it's that. not X Files, is it? Mm -hmm. You said Mulder. What did you say, Mul Muldauer? Muldauer. Colbert, Muldauer. Kelly, McFadden, Urban. Oh, oh, Star Trek. Um, doctors who, who played doctors on Star Trek. That's right. Oh my! Absolutely oh. incredible. Yeah, uh, Gates McFadden, right? Oh um, yeah. So those are the actresses and actors that did. Yes, yes. exactly. Oh wow, that's a good one. All right. Yeah, this is hardcore. This that is was obscure. Yeah, All right, we have time for just uh, one more here. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can do it. Laurier, McDonald, Gordon. Desmond, Queen Elizabeth II. Oh, um, uh, Canadian dollar bills. <laughs> Canadian money. Yeah, these are people who um, all appear on Canadian I money. was going to go prime ministers till you threw Desmond and the Queen in. That's all. So. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good, uh, Professor. Very, very good. Now, so. um, we have our uh, classic list here, thanks to the family of Frank Burroughs um, of uh, ATP favorites. And Are we're we just doing, uh, going down the line to give Michael some good stuff to chew up in post. So uh, you're just absolutely going to love what we're going to have to do today. Wait a minute. No, no, no. We're, we're doing the favorite Prasad, right? Steffi's still sleeping here? A little bit different. A little bit different. Darn. How about favorite defunct fashion trend that you wish would come back? Muscle <laughs> pants. 
<laughs> You're just playing with us here, Jason. <laughs> no, I mean it. <laughs> cargo shorts, really. Who can live without cargo shorts? I mean, spoken like a true dad. Ooh. 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 I mean, I've never been a fashion icon, so I really can't. <laughs> no, I was just thinking, wait, are you not supposed to wear cargo shorts anymore? Oh. They're, no, they're kind of out. Yeah. That's a hard no there. Wow. Yeah, that's a hard <laughs> no. <laughs> Back in the 80s, I used to wear those like big hair bows. You know? Oh, yeah. Do you, wish, do you wish those were back? I don't. I. Nah, I still have some. So. <laughs> Olivia wouldn't take them. So. Oh. Maybe I'll wear one, you know, next episode. Sure, sure. For her graduation. Hmm? For her graduation. Glasses and beetle wigs, but I hope neither of them come back. (laughs) What about bell bottoms? Yeah, and neighbor joints. Shoes from the 70s, but I don't want them to come back. They've actually come back and gone again. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Um, I would settle for just boot cut. Okay. Yeah. Um, how about how about Victorian? I mean, we should all walk around in style, right? <laughs> Powdered wigs. <laughs> yeah, I really miss the days of and the ruffles corset. and corsets. <laughs> yeah, I really don't want to breathe. So that and the bustles, bustles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, Mar, you're just doing the, the whalebone, right? That's right. Yeah, I kind of like double-breasted blazers. Ooh. They can make a comeback. Yeah, back to <laughs> 1930s or 40s. Yeah. Men clothing. That's right. Where they had style and the hats had style and hats. Fedoras, those need to come back into style. Mm. Want to get- would be nice. What do you want? What fashion would you like to come back? Dr. Manning. Wait. Rock. Me? Yeah. You. Me? You- yeah. Uh, yeah. Hats. I-, I couldn't. What I was going to say was that most fashions I can think of that have left us i wouldn't want to see any of them come back <laughs> when somebody mentioned hats men wearing hats nice fedoras that's i could live with that that's good yeah it is like good. Or women wearing hats that's right? fine too. That's even better oh, I, and not just and Barbara 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 Barbara. Barbara. nasal can come back and mm-hmm. that would be abs- just actually her coats it's just oh, her coats oh, yeah. around today her oh. dresses too. Oh, I know. There's... All of it. Yeah, her whole wardrobe. All yeah. of it. Yeah. But then we'd have to wear hose too. Yeah, oh. that's true. Yeah, I would. I would just not do that part. No. <laughs> yeah. well, her husband asked her once if, the, if it's uncomfortable to wear basically long line corseted bras, and she says to him, "Well, not once your ribs go numb." <laughs> 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 oh. That seemed like a. The perfect comment on <laughs> female body socialization. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Jim in a fashionable stovepipe hat, you know? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Give us snowballs. We uh, we really thank Frank Burroughs and his family for coming up with this list of favorites because we're going to be riding this pony uh, all the way to sunset. That's all I got to say. I'm afraid, though, we've reached the end of our time together, so I'll ask each of our panelists to say goodbye. Jim. Goodbye. Beth. Goodbye. Steven. Bye. Heather. Gonna go look for those hair bows. Mara. <laughs> Goodbye. Dave. See ya. Dan. Goodbye. Kendra. Bye. Jason. Adios. And mom. Bye. <laughs> and all these words from University of Detroit Mercy. <sighs> As the professor is transcribed to the facilities of our houses, but we're still in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. We're produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is that guy right there, Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>